Hi everyone, it's Ken LaRue from the Shotgun Team, and here's our tip for today in our 30 tips in 30 days. Today we're going to look at filters. What are they? How you can create them? How do you save them so you can use them again? There are filters that are the shared page filters, where anyone who accesses the project that the page filters are created in will be able to access those filters on those specific pages. And then there's also the My Task filters, which are filters you create as an individual person, and they are saved with your login. When you log into Shotgun, you will access your personal My Task filters. Now, in an earlier tip, we looked at how you can create tabs, which allow you to create custom views of a page. And part of that was looking at the filters, which allow you to control what is displayed on your page. Filters allow you to search for data within a set of records and are useful for narrowing down large data lists, large lists of information, so you view only the data you really need. Keep in mind that the permissions set up for the role that you are in Shotgun determines if you can save a page setup on a default page, such as your shots, your tasks, etc. But no matter who you are and what permissions you have, everybody can save a My Task filter and everyone can create a custom page and then they can save their own shared filters on those pages. And of course, remember that everything we're about to learn is relevant to any page that displays data, whether it's your shots, your tasks, your assets, and so on. Such as my asset page. I go to the asset page. Looking over here on the right-hand side, you'll see a button that reads filter. And if I expand it, you'll see a whole bunch of different options and different filters I can enable to display data and information on this page. Going to the Shots page, same thing. There's the Filter button once again. Expand it, and obviously because I'm looking at the Shots page compared to the Asset page, I will have different options available to me to what I want to use as a filter. For this video, I'm going to focus on the Task page, but obviously remember, what we're going to learn here is relevant to all the pages. I'll click the filter button once again to expose the flyout. And the first thing I want to point out to you is this area up here. This is where your filters will be saved. And you'll notice there's two of them that are saved by default, asset task and shot task. And these are very common queried results that someone will want to access on the task page. So by default, you already have two saved filters for the task page. As I click and toggle between the two of them, you're going to notice the data for the task is going to be changing, filtered by the asset name or the shot name. Below that now, we've got all these other options that we can enable and disable to start to control the data that's going to be filtered and displayed on our task page. You'll see status, pipeline step, assigned to. If I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of other widgets that are collapsed, but I have a link. I can expand that. Now I see all the different link options. Also notice some of these categories read show more because there's more people working on this project than just these five that are displayed here. So for example, if I clicked on show more for people, I'll now display more people that I can use as part of my filter. Scrolling back down, we also have start date, due date, my task filters, these are the ones that are custom only to you, and we'll come back to these in a minute. Below that, you also have the more filter setting. I click on this, and we'll see a flyout with all these options that we can use as possible filters. If I want to add the filter of task name, I click it from this flyout. You'll notice now the task name category has been added to the possible options I can choose. You can control the hierarchy of your different categories by just clicking on this little transform icon and dragging up or down to reposition this group to a different position. You can also remove a category such as task name by clicking on the gear icon and then from the flyout I can choose remove filter. Also notice the little page icon up here where our page setting is. There's the blue icon indicating the page has unsaved layout changes and I need to save these pages if I want to commit them. So if I wanted to set up some filters and commit them to this page, I could do so, and then I would save the page. Or if I've set up some filters and I wanna get rid of those filters and go back to the original saved page, I can choose revert page. And now Shotgun's going to revert the page back to the saved page before I made any changes. 
Now, this is where the permissions come to play, because I mentioned earlier, some roles, whether it's an artist or a manager or a vendor, might not have permissions that will allow them to save layout changes to a default page such as tasks. Well, as far as saving filters, you've got a couple different options. The first thing you can do is go to your page settings once again and choose Save Page As. Now I'm being asked to rename the page, so I'm going to name this Task Ken Filters and choose Create Page. Now you'll notice along the top, we're looking at a different page. This isn't the default task page. And if I come over to my filter settings now and I start to enable any of these filters, for example, let's say I want to filter so I'm looking at just the layout pipeline steps and I want to look at only the ones that are assigned to Renee Peterson. So I enable that. Now in my task page, I'm only seeing the layout work that is assigned to Renee. If I come back to my page settings and choose Save Page, those filters that are enabled now become part of the default layout for this page. So keep that in mind. If your permissions do not allow you to save on the default task page, you still can create shared filters by creating them on your own custom saved page. All right, now I want to go back to the default task page. So I'm just going to click on it along the top and we're brought back to our task page. Now I'll go back to my filter dialog box and directly under the two page filters, the default ones is an option that says new save filter. I'll click on this and this brings up the filter dialog box. There's a name field, but I'm going to click this little plus sign right there. That's going to give me a new field to start adding different filters or queries that I want to add to this. It reads assigned to by default, but if I click on this, again, you get that flyout with all the different options as we saw before. I'm going to set this to pipeline step. Next, I have the option of is, is not, name is. I'll leave it set to is. I'll click in this dialog box and I'm going to choose effects. Now I want to add another filter option. So I'm going to click the plus sign once again, and this time I'll expand our first option and I'm going to choose status. Then I'll come over here and I'm going to choose in progress. Then I'll click away to discard that flyout. Now let's name this. So I'm going to name this FX in progress. And then I'll choose create. Now you'll notice under the two default page filters, FX in progress is now available to me. Let's add one more. I'll click new save filter. I'll click the plus sign. I will choose pipeline steps again. This time I'm going to choose model, then I'm going to click the plus sign again, scroll down here, let's set this to be status, and I'm going to choose ready to start. And then I'll rename this filter, model ready to start. I'll click create. So now I can easily get the data and the information I need by clicking any one of the page filters that I've just saved. Now remember what I said earlier, I am the administrator for this project. So when I go to my page settings and I choose save page, I am now setting these filters as part of this page. And this filter is the currently displayed filter. So for example, if we bring up another UI of an artist that is logged into the same project and they go to the task page, you're going to notice that the filter that was enabled, the effects in progress filter, is enabled for this artist and is the default layout. And if the artist now goes over to the filter flyout, you'll notice that the shared page filters that I created and saved as the administrator are now available to this artist. All right, back here on my admin page, my login page, I want to switch my filter to be asset tasks. And I'm also going to go to my page settings and save this page. So now whoever is working with me on this project and they go to the task page, this is the layout and the filter that will be the default. Now let's talk about the my filters, these my task filters located at the bottom of our filter flyout. You create them just like you create your save filters up here. Click the plus sign and a dialog box will open and we start adding the different queries or filters we want to be part of this My Task filter. I'll click the plus sign and instead of assign to, I want to choose due date. And then I'll choose in calendar month 
and click in the last dialog box and I'll choose next and I'll leave it set to one. Now again, I'll hit preview to see the end result. So now I can create a filter that is going to show me all the work that is due in the next month. So I'll rename this filter due next month. And then I click create. You'll see now it's saved inside my task filter. So now I can very easily toggle this filter on and off to see the work that is due next month or to see all the work. Now for demonstration purposes, let's create another one. So I click the plus sign. I want to create one that is based on assigned to me, the work that I need to do. So this is great. That's the default configuration right there. Let's rename this. Assign to Ken, I click create, and then this My Task Filter is enabled by default, and now I'm viewing only the work that is assigned to me. I'll disable that filter, so now we're looking at our default layout once again. Now, just because I've created these, and these are My Task Filters, doesn't mean I cannot share them with other people. Bring in your cursor, over one of your My Task Filters, you'll see the first icon. If I click on it, it's going to ask me, who do I want to share this with? What is the person's name or what is the group? Just start typing the name, like Laura, and that artist or group will appear. I'll choose that, and then when I click Send, I now have sent this filter and I've shared it with the artist named Laura. So now if we bring back the artist Laura's shotgun login, we can see on the task page, if I expand the filters and we scroll down to the bottom where my task filters are, we can see due next month. This is the one that I just shared and sent to her. So as you can see, the page filters in shotgun are an extremely powerful feature that allow you to get the data that you need based on the query and the filters that you set up. All right, so that's our tip for today, 30 tips in 30 days.